Shane Livingston and welcome to Expat Kingdom and I'm really excited today to be speaking to Tom Saunders who lives down in San Clemente, Ecuador and uh, Tom you've been down there now for about eight years is that correct? Yeah we've been here for eight years we uh, came down in 2006 doing uh, water quality work of all things uh, and kind of fell in love with the coast and bought a small place here kind of on a on a whim. <laughs> oh that's awesome so um, I wanted to just kind of point out something, you know, interesting. You are the first person on the show that I've had that's uh, done the interview outside, and I just wanted to take a moment to thank you for making me extremely jealous because the view that you've got is absolutely gorgeous, and I can tell that uh, your weather is obviously quite a bit warmer down there right now than it is here. Yeah, we're just heading into the uh, the the rainy season here, the winter. This is the winter. Welcome. <laughs> so. So how cold does the winter get down there? The winter is actually warmer than the summer here. And so uh, the winter, you know, you get temps into the 80s and 90s, um, you know, and at the high part of the day. And if you're out in the sun, uh, it's this is pretty typical weather. You have blue sky days. Uh, and then in the evenings or, you know, kind of late at night or early morning, you'll get some rain. Um, and it varies from there. But, but this is kind of the nicest time of the year, one of the nicest times of year to be here. That's awesome, and I can't help but to notice you've got some uh, birds doing some pretty chirping around you too, so that's nice ambiance. Yeah, it is. Yeah, we have a, a mot mot that was around this morning and a couple of ropendulas that are, that are in our neighbor's yard here and some of the trees we have near our house, and so it's uh, nice to wake up to for sure. That's awesome. So uh, you've been down there now for a little over eight years. What, what really motivated you and your wife to, to move down there at that time? Uh, you know, we were, we basically saw saw a lot of potential here. I mean, we loved the quality of life. It really matched what we were looking for. We wanted, you know, we wanted freedom. We wanted this kind of environment. So we've, it's just something that really, um, I guess you could say, resonated with, with us. Uh, I had a full-time job in the States. And it was a great job. It was the best job I could imagine. Um, but it really didn't give me the freedom that I needed or that we needed. And uh, we were thinking about starting a family, and it just didn't seem like it was going to be um, kind of what we wanted. We wanted uh, kind of a little bit more of the choose-your-own-adventure. And we've gotten that down here. <laughs> we, we, we decided to come down. Um, as I mentioned, I came here doing water quality work as a consultant in 2006. And then my wife and I, once I finished with that, we spent about a week traveling on the coast. And... Uh, and after being in a lot of different places in Latin America, we just really liked Ecuador. There's, um, I guess, something especially welcoming about the people here. Uh, they're very open arms. You're almost, you know, you almost get a privileged, uh, you know, class when you arrive uh, from from the U.S. Mm -hmm. as North American here. You're almost treated with a, you know, special privilege, which is which is really welcoming. It's nice. That's, that's so, yeah, yeah that, that's an interesting point that you bring up because uh, I actually, you know, I, I probably don't mention that enough when I talk to people, especially in particular about uh, Ecuador, is that when you get down there as an American, I've found that you are, you, you, you are like a privileged class. It's like they really respect and look up to, um, I, I don't know if it's the, ex, the experience or the education. There's something, though, where they feel like if you are an American that you... Um, they want to be around that, and they want to they want to surround themselves around around Americans, and so I think they put a high value on organization, and they see the U.S. as being very organized, and and for a number of years, I mean, more and more so now, the country is becoming that way. Um, it's been an impressive, you know, uh, you know, five or six years that we've been here full full time. Uh, and watching all these changes happen right before our eyes, um, it's kind of mind blowing. And uh, and so yeah, I mean, people just respect that organization. Wow, that's interesting. Essentially, what um, what other countries did you guys check? Uh, had you traveled around? Because you mentioned that you guys have been around Latin America quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. We've. I mean, we weren't ever looking for a place to live, and we were still doing our graduate work. Um, I did my master's based in Peru, and so I lived in Peru for, um, you know, decent chunks of time over a two-year period. I was there for nine months straight, one year, and that's kind of when I learned when I learned Spanish. And then just traveling as as kind of young young adults, um, we traveled all through Central America. We spent a summer there. We lived in Nicaragua for for quite a while. Um, we've traveled to Venezuela. I've been in Brazil uh, doing work, 
and um, let's see, we've kind of bounced through, uh, you know, a few other countries here and there, Colombia, and, and, but we haven't spent a huge amount of time in those countries. But after being to a lot of South American capitals and all that, when we came to Ecuador, you got the coast, you have the mountains, you have the rainforest, um, and then you have the Galapagos kind of as a bonus. It's it's pretty incredible. <laughs> Yeah, that's something I, I, I do like to point out to people is that, you know, in, in Ecuador, you've got the Andes Mountains, you've got the Amazon Rainforest, you've got the coast, you've got Galapagos, so there's just a ton available in such a, a small little, uh, you know, region or, or location, and it's really neat, too, because when you go from, I mean, really, when you go to city to city or, or village to village, too, there's a lot of different little unique nuances in, in each of them too so it makes it kind of fun uh, bouncing around and stuff there's just a lot more to do there um, and, and you know I live in the suburbs of Atlanta and you know here there's really not a lot to do and, and you go it doesn't matter you can drive 30 minutes an hour away and you're still looking at the same kind of stuff and you're still you've got the same kind of activities to do whereas down there you know you can drive an hour out of out of Quito or an hour from you know, whatever city you're living in, and you've got something completely different to do and, and different to see. Yeah, you're right. I mean, here, even even from town to town on the coast, we find that there's a significant difference, like even, even between these little coastal towns. And so um, we find that, you know, you can, you can bounce around and really get to know uh, these different, these different towns and, and get a feel for what they're about. And there's small kind of party towns, and then there's more, uh, more business-like uh, and, and small cities uh, on the coast here, and then there's just small fishing villages, and, and each of them has a, a, such a different feel. And then you multiply that across <clears throat> all the different, you know, in the mountains it's the same way. There's all this variation between these different mountain towns. And, you know, we, we feel like we've been here for a long time, but we still don't, you know, there's still plenty of new places to go to. And yeah. so yeah, um, awesome. it's kind of exciting. So you mentioned earlier, too, that, uh, you know, you were looking for freedom. So can you just, I guess, dive into that a little bit deeper on what what freedom looks like for you or what that really means? Because I think that a lot of a lot of the people that are watching this video are probably going to be watching it for that same reason. They're looking for freedom. That's one of my big motivators too, is that I'm, I'm, I am, I'm looking for freedom. So can you just dive into that a little bit deeper? Yeah. Um, Freedom comes to me, at least for us, at least it came with risk. Um, in that we we kind of took a big risk coming down here. We saw uh, we saw the potential, um, but we didn't we didn't know exactly uh, how it was going to play out. And so, um, you know, I think if if you're coming down as a retiree with uh, with resources. Uh, it's basically just a choice because you can come down and enjoy that. Mm -hmm. um, if you're coming down as a young family, you you know you definitely have to be motivated and um, and have that kind of entrepreneurial spirit, so to speak, to to figure out what makes sense to do and uh, and decide what to do and, and actually do it. <laughs> and so for us, we came down and saw opportunity in real estate, um, you know, and in, and in construction and building. So, so how how long of a transition was that for you from the time that you got down there to the time that you really hit the ground running with starting your own, you know, you know starting your own entrepreneurial type type of a project? Well, we let's see. So we came in two thousand and we bought a small place uh, with money that we had saved up for a down payment on a place in the states and. Um, but we didn't really consider it, you know, for business seriously. I mean, we made some small investments here and there, but we didn't consider it for business seriously until 2010 when our first son was born. And then it was kind of like, oh, wow, yeah, now we have other living beings that are depending on us. We better get organized. And so we started focusing more then on, uh, and we were, you know, with a baby, it definitely, we had been uh, traveling around quite a bit. So it actually felt really good to, to let some roots uh, grow in a little bit. And so... Um, we hit the ground running, so to speak, basically right then in that we, we started developing small projects to build and, uh, and looking for opportunities to work with investors. Um, but it definitely, you know, we went from 
happy academic world to uh, business world reality over a very short period of time uh, in a foreign country, and then we added construction in on top of it, which which we gave ourselves a kind of a steep learning curve in a lot of ways. Um, and so we, you know, we took some losses here and there, but, but there's been enough, um, interest in, in, in what we're doing that we've been able to, to, to keep afloat. So it hasn't been without risk at all. Um, but it's definitely led us, uh, it's been enough for us to, to make a living and to kind of keep pushing forward on our, on our projects. And so, we're still going through the trend. I mean, we're still learning in that, you know, we're doing bigger projects now and, uh, and the learning curve continues to, to go up um, as we start dealing with, with larger, larger construction projects and having a construction company. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, for, for most people, it, it just takes finding, finding a key contact that can help you out, um, compensating them well, and, and making sure it's clear what their compensation is. Um, if you have somebody here that helps, helps you kind of bridge the gap between what you're as, as an American are versus what the reality is and what it takes to get things done here as, as an Ecuadorian, um, and if your relationship with them is, is clear, uh, I think it works well. Um, we had experiences, and we've seen others have experiences that a lot of their success boils down to uh, who they're working with. Yeah, I mean, I think it unless you have a lot of experience in a foreign country, it, it's good to it's definitely good to find find somebody here who you can work with. Um, if you have if you, you you know just if you can come down here with a decent buffer and take your time in making decisions, don't rush into things and. Um, and kind of figure out who's who's on your side and who's not, and all that sort of thing. Then it, it gives you a chance to to, to get established in, uh, in in a smart way and make it so that it works. Um, I mean, I wouldn't recommend. We kind of did it, um, but I wouldn't <laughs> recommend coming down here without without you know a, at least a decent reserve to uh, to be able to deal with um, just getting set up in a foreign country. Mm-hmm. And, and I'd always recommend to people who are considering coming down here uh, that they do come check it out in person first. Mm-hmm.